to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Appreciate it. Uh, this relates to a change of uh, job title for Vesta and Mary at my office. Um, I, I voiced last year that I didn't think the uh, the job title that they had and their job duties didn't match. And the commission, understandably, had other priorities. You know, not not expecting you all to drop everything uh, for the public administrator. And so this summer, I think Harold made some remarks that you were prepared to start addressing some of these issues. And, um, and so I decided to bring it up today uh, where we have um, uh, pro provided some uh, bullet points, PowerPoints, to help That's illustrate. Right. Yeah, you can go to the next one right now. So what we did was we went on the Internet and uh, we also went to the state website and we also went to other counties uh, because they have administrative assistance in their, um, uh, in their offices, in their public administration office and other offices as well. So we pulled off some of the highlights as to what administrative assistants are doing. Uh, their current job title is, is clerks and uh, and basically administrative assistants they are a step up as far as uh, analysis preparation execution of what needs to be done uh, in an office and so there's an illustration of some of uh, things that an administrative assistant does with my office Vesta primarily handles the uh, court filings and makes sure the bills are being paid uh, and Mary is primarily there helping me manage the wards we call them clients legally they're called wards we got 173 uh, in our county and basically when I say help manage the wards is to make sure that they got adequate housing medical care and basically that their bills are being paid for that uh, things are being done that needs to be done. Now, if some of you may know the history a little bit, uh, they have assumed a tremendous uh, amount of duties over the years. Uh, they have 40 years experience between them. My predecessor, who was a great public administrator, um, for the last couple years he held office, uh, he had some severe disabilities to fight himself, and so that was their chance to take a bat at the plate and they hit home runs. They responded to every single challenge. So with their assistance last year, uh, mm -hmm. you guys were kind enough to allot about $16,000 to the public administrator office for contract labor for me to hire a lawyer, you know, to represent us in court as public administrators. Every single dime of that contract labor was returned to the county. In 2018, I have not sent, I have not spent one dime on contract labor for legal work that has been allotted to my office. 
because of Vesta and Mary and what they bring to the table. And I'm going to be candid here. Outside, in the private practice of law before I became public administrator, I was probably one of the worst probate lawyers in the county. You put me in this office with these ladies, I have become one of the best probate lawyers in this county. And it's not like I walked through the threshold of the door and all of a sudden got smart and wise. It was these ladies that have assumed tremendous responsibilities to, uh, to benefit this county. Also, last year one of the commissioners asked whether I wanted an additional staff member. And I spoke to Vest and Mary and I said, you guys want somebody in here to help you? Do you feel like you need to help? And they said, no, I think that we can handle this. And so we declined an additional staff member last year. And to me, by the time you add the salary and the benefits associated with that, it's about 30000 And so if you round off on an annual basis because of Vesta and Mary, we're able to save the county about $50,000 annual. We're not spending that money because of what they bring to the table. Want to show the next one up there? Okay, so Vesta, 26 years of service. <coughs> Mary, 14 years of service. And uh, about a combined total of 40 years of service. I've given you more of, uh, of a packet. There's additional information which includes wages and stuff, comparing what their wages would be as clerks to what it would be as administrative assistants. And it's not a huge increase in wages, so we're not asking for leaps and bounds on wage increase. And if you, if you look at uh, uh, the two bullet points underneath, it's important to understand that to Judge McCarver at the probate division, uh, their title is not clerks. Their title is deputy public <coughs> administrators. They have been deputized. Certain duties have been delegated to them, not only by my office, but by the court to do administrative duties, not strictly limited to clerical mm -hmm. duties. We've also, like I said earlier, we have uh, compared the state definition on web website as the what an administrative assistant does. We've also looked at other counties as what an administrative assistant does. You go to the next bullet point. Bullet point or slide? Oh, slide. I'm sorry. Uh, and so these are how things have changed over the last few years. Uh, one of the things that has happened is that there's a huge increase in young adults with severe disabilities. Uh, it may be partly due to the uh, explosion in the opioid uh, epidemic. I don't know. But the old days, you had old people sitting in nursing homes, and those were your clients or wards. And now we have a lot of young people, for whatever reason, who need a guardian. And in some of those cases, the families are all wigged out. They can't handle a young person. It falls into the lap of public administrators. It becomes very labor intensive because they're a lot more difficult to manage, so to speak, than, uh, frankly, the old people that are sitting in nursing homes. Also, over time, the changes in court filings have increased. We all know this. Anybody that works for government knows that there's more and more accountability. There's more and more requirements. There's more and more things that have to be filed. Vesta does a, a tremendous job in that. And all the time, uh, Medicaid eligibility requirements change uh, due to uh, changes in the law. We now have to become many experts on trust because we have to make sure that our clients continue to remain eligible for Medicaid. Uh, if, they, uh, you know, if they have resources, you gotta try and keep them eligible for Medicaid so they can get their medical care and can get adequate housing, some of which is subsidized by Medicaid. In addition, uh, we also are, and this is attributable to them, not me, uh, Judge McCarver sends us a lot of Gordian knots over in probate court. In other words, probate cases, they're all screwed up or all messed up. The, uh, the uh, 
the personal representative of the estate, they not doing their job or whatever, the attorney's not doing their jobs, he ships them over to us to untangle them. That is a direct testament to Vesta and Mary as to what they can do uh, in probate court. Now, this last one is very, very important because one of my important objection, uh, objectives as public administrator uh, relates to I never want to see the county sued under my watch and see there's a lawsuit right now in Calhoun County where a ward or client had left their boarding home, disappeared for a few days, and then uh, was found dead in a dumpster. And so when the lawyer wound up suing, they didn't, just didn't sue the boarding home, they wound up suing the public administrator and the county official and the county itself for not adequately supervising their vendors and service providers. I can tell you that my experience is that these ladies make sure that the people that we use that have resources to help us manage our clients or on top of that job. I'm very proud of them because they have a very high standard and they make sure that our clients are being taken care of. Next one. All right, and so this is kind of a list of things that they're doing as what I call uh, deputy public administrators. I've kind of like labeled them the same way the court labels them. I'll just give you one example on the right side there, finding family members. I have been a uh, lawyer since 1985, and I have spent a lot of time over the years trying to find people because you gotta serve them, or you gotta try and get a judgment executed, or whatever it is that you need to get done as a lawyer. I have paid good money uh, over the years to investigators or process servers of one type or another to find people. I can tell you that I've never encountered any office in any setting that can find people better than these ladies can. Combined 40 years experience, they find people. That is not administrative. I'm sorry, that is not clerical. That is administrative to be able to find people because sometimes you need to do that. Okay, move to the next one. Okay, and uh, this relates to comparing us to other first class counties. Uh, that is part of your packet uh, where you have the statistics. The ratio of number of cases to number of uh, staff people, uh, it's really more accurately reflected to be like uh, three to four to two. In other words, if you compare our staff with other counties and our caseload and their caseload, they are having three to four staff people for our two, and so that it would be reduced to a 1.5 to two staff people per, per, per R1. So basically, shorthand way of saying it, that these ladies are doing twice the workload that other people are doing in first class counties who are similarly situated as St. Francis County. They are doing <coughs> tremendous work. Okay, um, so other counties, they have administrative assistance. Um, and if you go on the internet, uh, it'll describe more detail as to what business colleges and things like that describe as administrative assistance. Um, and so we claim, in addition to saving that $50,000 on an annual basis, we claim that we're getting an uptick on pouring money into the county because Judge McCarver is sending cases over to us that have money and it's got screwed up one way or the other, you know, and it's kind of like it's a Gordian knot. What do I do with it? I'll send it over to the public administrator because Mary and Vesta know what they're doing. We untie the Gordian knot. We get fees. We take these key fees and pay them into the county. So these ladies, I think based upon their experience and what they add to our county, I think we should recognize for the tremendous input that they've uh, helped us uh, administer uh, good work in this county and recognize them as what they are, administrative assistants, and allow them to be reclassified within the Tyler system with the appropriate raises. I do think if I understand what Amber told us, we have until uh, November 15th to do the final budget. When we submitted our budget 
a few weeks ago we put a little asterisk there when it came to payroll giving you all the opportunity to hopefully decide by November 15th the to reclassify these ladies and reward them for the good job that they've done. Thank you. When do you want this to be effective? Uh, January 1st, next budget. And your recommendation is that we do Yes. Okay, I know that we take this under advisement. Uh, we're going to get probably more requests before this budget cycle for the next year. appreciate that and if it could be I think next week would be before <clears throat> November 15th so I'm hoping that it would be tabled and reset before November 15th so that you all can make a decision before then because after the 15th it'll be too late to put it on next year's budget if I understand I appreciate it thank uh, you any other questions okay I have a motion second all in favor all right uh, next uh, item is request for approval of bid of communication line drops for the new court, uh, drug court area in the Weber Road facility. Every uh, office out there has to have a different security system, so they've all got their own phones and Wi-Fi system, and part of their rental agreement is that they furnish that, and we don't furnish their phones and Wi-Fi. Of course, county-owned offices would be another matter. Uh, there's the only price we have on it is well below the $6,000 sealed bid limit. And uh, both uh, our uh, IT department and uh, Judge Rudd have suggested that we request that we go ahead with this. So this is their purchase, it's our approval. Uh, under what uh, budget drug right. court? Yeah. Right. 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 Under drug court budget. Yeah. It is for drug right. court, yes. But yeah. This was not a court. bid, that's his bid. That's an estimate. It was, this was just quotes. They didn't have to. They yeah. didn't have to select solicit competitive. They're seeking bids. approval to do to take advantage. Yeah. I think the issue was that they needed um, approval the for the budget the amendment because it wasn't included in this, the their original goal. budget when yeah. we did it last year. This was an unanticipated cost, so we'll probably have to amend their budget to allow for this, which they have the cash reserves to do so. There is there is money. In there. Yes. Okay. <laughs> And Judge Rupp apologized for not being here, but he's in court today. All the recommendation of the drug court judge, I do it second that motion. Okay, and Dano is, uh, they're kicking in the new servos at the jail, and he's tied to that. Linda, you have a question? Could you read that amount? I just can't read it. Oh, it's, uh, well, got it right here. I know you said under $1,391.50. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Motion second, all in favor? Aye. Thank you. Uh, the reason we're moving drug court out there is it reduces scheduling load, scheduling load on the courtrooms over here. Because you know, I have a finite number of courtrooms and the judge is kind of off from the afterthought of his proceeding, so he had to uh, worry about that. <coughs> so he's using our training rooms out there for that. Uh, also, they've got a bigger office jumping to the bottom, so they've got room to, to expand and do more work out there with the drug court. And then it opens up two rooms in the courthouse, and there's two basic offices over there. So one of them will become a conference room for attorney, uh, private attorney and client discussions, <coughs> and the other will become a children's room. And we have furniture and furnishings donated for both of those. So that's the reason we're doing all this stuff. And another thing I looked at was why not move more courtroom stuff out there? It turns out that the other courtrooms have to have bailiffs and clerks and they don't want to move those separately. Uh, let's call it response time for the bills. They don't want to have separation of space in there so they can be right on any situation that comes up. So they would rather keep the bailiffs and the clerks localized at this courtroom, courthouse, and then move the drug court out there since he doesn't use those aspects of it. So that's the reason behind all that. I have a question. Yes. Is the children's room going to have an attendant? 
going to have it, an attendant when they allow children in there? Are they going to have someone like daycare? Attendant? To, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know that. It'd be playground stuff, and I'm sure there will be someone there to do that. Uh, they do it now, so I'm sure that'll be just. It's just a place to get that kid out. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes those kids are in there all day mm -hmm. and sitting out in the hallway, and it's not a good day for them. <coughs> so it's just a way to help those kids. Okay, any other questions? Uh, Mark, you had a report about the election. Yeah. Uh, at this point, as of this morning, we have received 1,109 absentee ballots. And that is above what we received in 2014. Uh, we're still quite a ways away from 2016, but, but people are still voting absentee. They're still coming in. We have a number in the mail that's, that's out that we received about 20 this morning in the mail, and then people are coming into the office to vote. We will also be open this Saturday, November the 3rd, from 8 until noon, for absentee voting. The office will be open this Saturday. Okay, any questions on that, Mark? Okay, right next meeting will be right here next week, this same location. Uh, other business, Mark? Okay, yep. He's got an announcement. Commissioner. <laughs> but he was first introduced to me as a judge. Right. That's how right. 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 he was an elected judge in this county. Okay. Uh, yeah. I guess under departmental reports on here. Okay. Uh, well, I've got one for the next slide. Uh, okay. Mark Miller, uh, public Mark comment? In Washington County. In the system. Okay. Mark Miller reports. There's. Yes. Uh, County Commission, it is my distinct pleasure to inform you that St. Francis County saving taxpayer dollars by volunteering has been selected to receive one of two 2018 Mack County Achievement Awards. The award will be presented at the business meeting during the Mack Annual Conference on Monday, November 19th at 3.30 p.m. The committee which selected the award received it felt it would be helpful for other counties to know more about the winning project. The MAC staff has been asked to set up a display at the conference for any additional pictures, brochure, materials you feel might be beneficial aside from what you've already sent us. If you have such materials, please bring them to the MAC conference. Congratulations, and I look forward to seeing you in Osage Beach next month. Sincerely, Dick Clark, Executive Director. So we did win another MAC Yeah, and they get several Applications, I guess you'd say, every year. Mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. we've got it again. So that's right. Right. Thank you. Any uh, anything else? Uh, any other department reports? I yes. Have a report. Mm -hmm. this information to the public. I don't know right. how to do so, that best. Um, so basically, it goes by felony cases filed. So the total of felony cases that we filed from November 1st, 2017 to October 30th of 2018 was 904 cases total that we have prosecuted and filed. Uh, the total misdemeanors, uh, including some infractions, was 795 cases. So the total number of cases was 1,699. Uh, they go by uh, the year that it needs to be filed, so it has to be filed before or on November 1st. So it goes on November 1st of the prior year until the end of October 
Well, in looking at the numbers, the, uh, the crude number of total cases went up about 9% yes. from 17 to 18. Yes. Uh, dollars? The dollar amount for restitution collected um, so far. considerable. Yeah, yeah and so far. 30% or so. Right. And the asterisk that it shows that basically it's only until today. So that does not include the end of the year. So from October, November, rest of tomorrow, plus November and December, we will still be collecting restitution for the rest of the year. So that's that will change. That's change. Yeah. Will change. Yeah. And talk about the restitution paid to crime victims. And yes, that would be victims yeah. of um, of our crimes like uh, all our felony, some misdemeanor cases. <coughs> okay, any questions? I know it's difficult to... Right, and if you, if you have any questions, you can come to the office. We have full reports. I brought just the back side of them. We just sent all of them. 150 to 160 pages long, depending on how many. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Any other departmental reports? Yes, sir. Commissioners, uh, we had a recent health fair and teen care, which is our service provider through our health care program, says there were 40, 49 total employees attending, which was 25% of the workforce. 41 of those re received a flu vaccination, 27 employees received a shingles vaccination, and those 27 employees will be notified of the second vaccination for shingles in the next month or so. Okay. And I got my book, all I did was blood test, I got the book, and it's literally a book for you. It talks about every test and how that affects your overall health and everything about it. It's really, really well done. I appreciate it. So, but you didn't get yours. I did not. Okay, so I'm either dead or very healthy. That's <laughs> provided by the West. Okay. Any other departmental reports? Okay, I'm running out of meeting. Adjourn that. Who's the term? Hey, Harold. I was supposed to be on the agenda today. Uh, what? Mark, did you know? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But Mr. Colvin, it hasn't been before 10. If it's after 10, it cannot be this last week prior to that letter that you just uh, showed everybody. I didn't get a year. note on that. This is the second time. It was the second time I was supposed to be on the agenda. Okay. Honestly, so we I don't know anything about it. And I didn't know anything either. So you need to contact me. Okay. Okay. Could we have some time? Yeah. Could Mr. Copeland have some time? You mean now in the meeting? Yes, no, absolutely. It'll have to be, it'll have to be a, a public comment only, and we can't act on it. We can't make any decision based on it. Because we're going to return to. Can't wait for next week. Well, no. Have you legally we'll, adjourned? I know you made the motion for the adjournment, but was there a vote to adjourn? No. So then you're technically not. There wasn't a vote. Okay, so. Yes. Uh, Jim, you can make a public comment, but we can't act on it because it's not an agenda. Withdraw the motion for adjournment. Okay. Actually, I got an issue. Well, okay. Yeah. Oh, you need to withdraw the motion to adjourn. Yeah, we'll withdraw the motion. Okay. Withdraw the motion. Okay. Withdraw. Okay. You need a second. Oh, I'll second. Okay. 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 Ok
expenses for the mortgage over there, $127,000. I don't see how that affects the county at all. I mean, that's just a private business. We're funding a private business, and I don't understand that. Could I provide some clarification? Uh, yes. yes. It wasn't the fact that the gloves were over budget. It was the autopsy cost that was over budget. But the gloves was just a clarification that the commission needed for the amount of gloves purchased this year because it was well, double. I, I, I think by even the statute, by more budget on autopsy, by Missouri statute, the county has to pay that autopsy. No, bill. and that's, it was the timeliness. We got, what are we in? October, and we were just now getting autopsy invoices from July. It was the timeliness of the invoices we received that was in question. And the gloves, it wasn't about the budget at all. It was the amount of gloves that were being bought because it was double what had been in the past. And that was just a question that was asked by the commission and the auditor. But it's still yet to be answered. Uh, we're in public comment now, so we can't act on this. Exactly. So, Sounds like this can wait till next week. Put it on the agenda for next week, and we can do that now. You can put it on yeah. the agenda. So let's do that. Let's, then we can tackle this next week. Well, this invoice is over 120 days old. I hate to pay it off the longer. It kind of affects my credit because I bought it on my credit. I understand that. But, you know, I've sent you three or four emails on that trying to get that. Sure. The last email I got was just the last couple of days. I can print them out. I've been copying on all of them, and it has been over the last few months. We've been trying to reach yeah. Mr. Copeland about this issue. Okay. And I did come in. Okay. Okay. So that's public comment. And now, is there any other public comment? And we'll handle yours next week. We'll be on the agenda next week. Are you able, may I ask a question? Are you able to um, uh, public uh, a private? I don't know that answer fully. Like right. Are, are able you to able to? Um, can, are you, is the county able to pay for a public, for funding a public private business? We're not. That we're funding, you're not. We're funding a more department. So are the taxpayers, I'm, I'm, I'm responding as a taxpayer because I'm helping fund that private more, correct? <coughs> or, am I, or am I not correct? So we are. And that is legal and that is justifiable. And everybody in our lovely county has voted and approved on this, or they don't need to? Because I'm confused. Well, we're representing the form of government, so. Yes, sir. No, that's not an item of public vote. Uh huh. Okay, so I guess my main question is it is legal. Well, who it owns the more? Um, who owns the more? Yeah, we own the building. And you lease it, correct, to Dr. Dieter? We collect rent on it. 18000 a year? Uh, that's going up. Why are we funding them 127? You know, we're out of, okay, let's do that next week on the agenda item. Okay, let's do it then. Okay, should be interesting. Can you just answer my question? Is it legal that we, did. That we are funding a private business? St. Francis County is funding a private we are business. We're not funding a private business. Okay, so that isn't a private business. <laughs> we're not funding it. But we have a budget. The county has a budget for we it that budget. you're paying. Okay, I'm paying an assistant, fifty thousand. We're paying an assistant to work there for fifty thousand. Is that correct? She's our department head. Okay, department head. Okay. Okay. Now, yeah. any other public comments? Okay. Now, do I have a motion for adjournment? I move to second. Okay. I'm sorry. Now, Dan, why is sheriff's job job different than every other law enforcement official? 